Good morning and welcome to Friday's Devotions and we're looking at 2 Peter and we're on to chapter 3 and we're looking at verses 1 to 9. So let's read together when I pop on my glasses. I can see clearly now, there we go, or sort of clearly now. Behold, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Saviour, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they will willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, don't forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that they should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. And so, really, we see uh, Peter is coming to the end of this letter, and he's just uh, saying why he's written the letter and you get a real feeling of, of you know his heart coming out of put here we see Peter's heart he writes to stir up you know stir up to awaken to make alert and you know you get the idea of him saying look you know can you understand now do you see this you know I, I, I'm making it clear has a penny dropped and this word to stir up he says I stir up your pure minds is in the Greek is digero, and it means to stir up, to awaken. Okay, so it's as if you're saying, come on, you know, uh, uh, giving someone a bit of a shake, you know, and so it, it brings that thing of be sober, be vigilant, you know, be uh, watchmen on the walls, be uh, uh, gatekeepers. Um, so also, you know, he says, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Saviour. You know, he doesn't go into any elaborate, you know, you must do this because of this and this and this is what God has put on us. No, it's just very straight and clear. You know, listen to the holy prophets, listen to us. And so you can see there's it's really matter of a, a fact. You know, he knew that they were endued with the authority of God and they were speaking God's words. Um, so, so there's that call to, I've put here, to read learn, study the scriptures. Also remember at this time he doesn't say anything about the New Testament because the New Testament hadn't, that canon of scripture hadn't been brought together, uh, you know, but he does say with authority what we the apostles say. So, you know, I think if Peter were speaking now, he'd be saying, you know, the the the, the holy prophets and, the, the you know, what we've got together in the New Testament, basically. So, also here there's a reminder of scoffers and mockers, false teachers, you know, and you can see that maybe people have made predictions like they do even today, you know, uh, Nero's killing people, there's so much persecution, the end is nigh, you know, the, the Jesus is coming back now, we're, we're in the great tribulation and then it passes and so you get this, this mocking that, oh, it'll never happen, you know, uh, so you know, they latch on to that and then they, they become mockers of, of the word of God. And Peter reminds, you know, the earth is formed by God. The flood was sent by God and the end is also in God's timing. And so we see in the times of Noah, uh, the men were judged by God with water. You know, so God through Noah calls them to repent. He's building an ark. You know, I don't know how long it took the ark to be built. Uh, it, people are always trying to calculate it. But Noah, in that whole time, he was seen as a preacher of righteousness. He was a preacher of God's ways. And, you know, so really he was calling people to repent. What is repentance? A return to God's ways. 
And so now we've got the end times are, are going to come on men and judge God will judge this time by uh, fire. And so we can see, let me just go to my, my notes if I can find them. So we're looking at sort of verse verse 7 there. But the heavens and earth which are now preserved by the same word are preserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And so in, in Matthew 25 and verse 41 it says, Then uh, shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, uh, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Second Thessalonians 1 and verse 8 says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so you see where God has judged man in the times of Noah uh, and brought the flood. God will judge man again and will bring um, their judgment will be through fire. So, you know, you might have that sort of thing of, you know, why is, is God taking so long? Though the, the, the inference of, you know, God is slack, sort of, in my mind, sort of is like, you know, when you get a, a parent sort of saying, you know, if you don't do this uh, uh, to their children, if you don't do this, I'll do that. And they make these false threats and sort of maybe, you know, that word, I didn't look at it in the Greek, but it sounds as if, you know, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise in the sense of he doesn't make a false promise. And so what he has said, he will accomplish. But why is it taking so long for God to accomplish, you know, to bring a fulfillment uh, to all these times? And we see here, Peter explained it, you know, God's desire is for as many as possible to be saved. God's desire is for all should come to repentance and hence God is patient, God is long-suffering because his heart is full of compassion but he's God so he is just also and true to his word. So I put here, you know, the listener needs to know the word of God, live the word of God and preach the word of God. You know, it, it, it throws responsibility on us because God's word will be accomplished. And so, like in the times of Noah, where Noah was a righteous, uh, a preacher of, of, of righteousness, we need to be preachers of righteousness uh, at this time. Okay, so uh, what I feel God is saying to me through these verses, uh, as you see Peter saying, wake up, you know, come on, be awake, look, see. Uh, uh, in Northern Ireland, we'd say, wise up, wise up. Uh, um, Pay attention, and, and uh, you know it's very clear. Obey, obey God's commands, and so we need to be encouraging people in God's ways to obey His word uh, uh, without any reticence. Oh no, I couldn't tell them that. Oh no, no, you know, mm, uh, no. We've got to uh, have a, a, the love of God, God's authority, and say, "Here, come on, it's written here. Look at this. Come on, uh, you can't live like that." That doesn't please God, but in a way that will encourage people to practice his way. So I put here, like, love one another, you know, conduct, morality, speech, you know, finance. Uh, uh, so God's message, you know, is that God gives you the capacity to live a progressively more holy life. In other words, I am being transformed from glory to glory. That's the word of God. So, and, and, you know, I will exhibit more of the fruit of the Spirit as that transformation uh, process progresses. So, how can I apply what God is saying in a practical way for today? Uh, to do that, I've got to practice what I preach. Or there's no real authority in what I speak. Uh, I've got to know the Word of God. I've got to practice the word of God and I've got to be full of God's glory. I've got to be full of the spirit of the Lord. I've got to be full of the spirit of wisdom. I've got to be full of the spirit of understanding. I've got to be full of the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So you'd have to say, God, fill me, fill me, fill me in the name of Jesus. Pray that over you. God, fill us this morning. Uh, with your spirit, your glory, that we might be obedient to your will and way. Amen. Okay, so 
Question three, is there a sin I need to abandon? I've put here, the flesh is deceitful. False teachers are preying on the deceitfulness of the flesh, you know, which is often manifest in finding a, a way to do my will, you know, my will be done, not God's will, my will. And, and uh, you know, it's incredible that, that, you know, people will try and get other people that ask their opinion and they'll keep on asking people's opinion until they get someone who agrees with what they want to hear. You ever notice that? And so, uh, you know, or say what they want to hear. So we need to not chase after what people say, but we need to chase after what God is saying. Um, so four, do these verses speak of a promise to apply for my life? The promise is really clear, you know, that God is faithful and God will bring a final judgment. It will happen. I suppose it reminds me of, you know, is there a promise? The promise is going back to Second uh, Peter and chapter 1, you know, the, the promises is here. Oh, let me see. Verse 4, you know, we've been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You know, we've escaped that. We've got to stand on the word of God. We've got to uh, uh, press in to these great and uh, pr precious promises, you know, and add to our faith. So it just keeps on, for me, coming back to that promise that we can add, we can grow. Okay, five. Is there an example I need to follow? There's lots of examples here. Verse 1, you know, stir up. So you've got to practice his word. Verse 2 uh, uh, says, be mindful. So you've got to know and continually refresh your mind in the word of God. And, and verse 9 says that we it all should come to repentance and, uh, you know, that means we all need to be returning. Every area of his life must be uh, in accordance with his word and his will and his way. And so, uh, you know, doing that is we need to live a life of, of repentance. Six, what do these verses teach me about the Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Really teaches us these verses about God, you know. God, the creator, don't forget God's the creator. He's all powerful. He's almighty. He spoke things into being. You know, God brings life. God is all powerful. And also, uh, God is faithful. He stands by his word. He said to Noah, build an ark, you know, and, and you know, make the ark. I'm going to, uh, you know, and so uh, God fulfills his word. And so he's fulfilled, as we look through scriptures, how God has fulfilled what he has said, and he will fulfill what he has said. Okay, so we also see then, but God is patient, he's long-suffering, he's caring, he doesn't want any uh, uh, to perish. So he gives us as much time as he can, but time will run out. So question seven, is there any warning that I must heed? Uh, God will accomplish his words. Now is the time to repent, not tomorrow. Uh, know his heart, his will, and you know, don't listen to ear ticklers. I put here, and and there's a real sense of you know, you have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. You know, many people shirk responsibility, uh, but there's a real call to assuming uh, our responsibility, your responsibility. You know, you can't read sort of Second Peter and continue with your head in the sand. Well, you could, but you know, it's difficult. Um, you know, because you see the peril of not assuming responsibility for your faith and walk with God. Okay. Uh, eight, what other lessons are there in these verses? Uh, so we've talked about uh, being sober, being vigilant. And, and that doesn't mean you need to go about with a sad face. I'm being sober. I'm being vigilant, you know, all serious. Uh, um, I think, you know, when we come in to God's presence and we spend time with God, 
you know, there are times when we can get sad. There are times where we can get burdened. And, and often that's because we feel God's heart for a broken, hurt and suffering world. And we feel his burden and we feel that the weight of that on us uh, a little bit. I think if we felt it all, it would crush us. But, you know, but fundamentally, when we spend time in God's presence, it, it fills us with joy. It, it gives us grace and confidence. It, it, it removes fear as his love fills us and, and gives us strength for the day. You know, like this morning I was downstairs uh, uh, out the back with my cup of coffee and I was just talking to God and, and I was, you know, telling him some of my worries, some of my concerns. I was praying and it was like God just brought my attention uh, to one of Hebekah's potted plants and a beautiful flower. And, you know, I had been oblivious. I'd been just pouring out my heart. I wouldn't say complaining, but just, you know, it says cast all your cares. I'm just going to hear God. This is what I'm worried about. I need to give it to you because I need to get on with the day. I need to leave that with you. And it was as if God was saying, well, here, I made that flower. Isn't it beautiful? You know, all the details, uh, you know, it's okay. Trust me. With what you've given me, trust me. It'll all be okay. You've given it to me, leave it with me. And, uh, you know, it meant that I could come in and, and press into his word and hear and, and focus. And uh, anyway, so there we go. So God said, stop worrying. Trust me in these things. Now get on with your day. So with him. So how can I, you know, how can I apply uh, these lessons? We're built for relationship with God. Uh, we're create, we've got to create time for God and also tell people, and be honest and open about our relationship with God. You know, so really simple thing this morning. God spoke to me and drew my attention to a lovely flower and told me that, you know, where he took care of the flower and made the flower, he'd also take care of me. Wasn't I more precious than the flower? You know, lovely. Uh, is there something I need to confess? Wrong meditation produces fear and anxiety. Meditating on God, his word, his promises produces faith and boldness and it's really easy to meditate on the wrong things so take keep on taking the wrong thoughts captive um, and walk in his grace hey god bless you hope you've enjoyed this morning's devotional and remember we are to be sober and vigilant we're to, to be awake to what's going on but also we're to be full of his glory full of his grace his peace over you Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye for now.